All right, welcome everyone back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to kind of do something a little different. I'm going to be using the new Onzel Engineering Suite. Uh, it's a commercial company who does development with FreeCAD. And they've made some pretty awesome changes. So I'm just going to kind of show how to make this nifty little shelled part. Now, I've made this part in SolidWorks 2023 before. And, I mean, it's, it's not hard to do in either one. Uh, it takes about the same amount of time because there are some things in SolidWorks that don't exist in FreeCAD and there's some things in FreeCAD that don't exist in SolidWorks and vice versa. So, I mean, the workflow is not too bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and close Onzel just so you can kind of get an idea of, of how it works. So I'm just going to reopen it here, drag it up to my second monitor. And inside this, if you're using FreeCAD, you can follow along. Do not click empty file. We don't want to do that right now. We want to click a standard part. So this is going to load. And notice it's giving you a body already and we're in part design bench. So if you're unfamiliar with what uh, the difference between part design and part is, part design requires a body for your solid to be into. And if you want more than one solid, you need more than one body. And it uses kind of the modern way of creation of parts. You create a sketch and then extrude or boss or cut or pocket and loft and et cetera, et cetera. Now, part design uses the old school kind of method, the um, CSM, Constructive Solid Modeling, where it's like direct modeling. You create a shape, such as a circle, and then if you want a hole in that circle, you create another cylinder that'll pass through it and you do boolean operations to subtract it so think of you're holding a chunk of wood in the shape of a circle like a, a, a disc and then you want to drill a hole through it you actually get a physical drill bit and drill a hole same thing with part design you draw the drill bit sort of speak as another cylinder angle it do whatever and then subtract it out and it creates your hole but we're not going to mess with the part workbench today. We're just going to mess with part design and create that nifty little shape. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a body. No, you're not. I already lied. So we're going to go ahead and delete that one. We're going to click on the body. And we're going to click uh, create sketch. We want the front plane, which is the XY, I mean the XZ plane. And then we're going to create a sketch and my tools have seemed to disappear so I need to find them if you give me just a second here right here okay sometimes moving from one monitor to the other your tools disappear okay so if you don't want the grid on you just click it right here it's just grid, but I, I like it on so I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle I'm in millimeters so I'm gonna do this by, I'm going to go 75, hit tab, and I'm going to do 125, hit enter. Notice it went green, which means it's fully constrained. Um, newer versions of FreeCAD, I don't know if the smart mentioning, like what I have turned on has been implemented yet. I know in a weekly build it has, but in the newest version of Onzel, O-N-D-S-E-L, it has been. You can see it right up here. Just search that on Google, and it will take you there. You can... Just type in the dimensions. Okay, so we're just going to hit close. Then we're going to pad or extrude it. And let's see, half an inch, 12.25. No, we'll just go solid 12 millimeter. Why not? Okay. Then we're going to click the front face. And we're going to click create sketch. Now in SolidWorks, what's cool is if you click here, notice it's constrained to this vertical line. If you came over here, you could constrain it to this line and, and, and just do the one dimension. But we don't have that in FreeCAD. One thing we could do is click this little button right here. This one is Reference Geometry. You click it and it brings in purple lines. And now we should be able to snap to it. So now we can type in 75 tab. Um, Let's go with 40 millimeters. It's fully constrained now. So, whoops, I want to be back in the front. Let's see. 
Now, if we didn't have these reference, the if we didn't have the reference geometry turned on, we could just type in 75 by 40. It would still constrain it. All right, then hit close, and we're going to pad that uh, 12 millimeters again. Okay, we're actually almost done. We're going to click the front face. We're going to click Create Sketch. We're going to take a circle, and we're just going to drop it right here. We're going to make it, you know what, for kicks and giggles, let's go with 12 for the radius. Okay, now we need to be able to constrain it to this edge and this edge. However, remember, we can't click on anything right here, so we need to bring in reference geometry. So, okay, now with that, we're going to go to our dimension tools. We want click this one right here, and we want constrain distance. So we want to go from here to here. We want it to be 25 millimeters, and then we want to go from here to here, 25. Now it's fully constrained, uh, 25 millimeters to an inch. So close it. I'm going to hit pocket, and we're going to go through all, and hit OK. All right, now we're almost done. We're going to go to fill it, which is this one, or you can click an edge and hit fill it. And then what you can do is now hit select and click this one. You can see these are two purple, and you can see there's a small little fillet, but we're going to change that to 25 and just click somewhere out of the box or outside of this box. So click in here to reset it, and you can kind of see how that's worked on that. Click OK. Then we're going to do some chamfering, and we're going to click chamfer. We want distance and angle. We want an angle of 45, distance of, let's go with three millimeters, select our edges, click these right here, and that one. This bottom one might fail. Let's do preview. Nope, it worked. Okay, so three millimeter. Let's see if we can bump that up to four. Click OK. All right, the last thing we need to do is we're going to rotate. Now, if yours does not rotate around the center, we can go to Edit, go to Preferences, um, drag it back up here, go to Display, Navigation, and Object Center for Rotation Mode. It is very helpful. I'm in Blender for my navigation style down here. So if you hold Shift, middle mouse button, moves that around, left click and right click don't really do anything, and then you have your rotation with middle mouse button. Now I'm just used to that because of using SketchUp Pro and Blender. Okay, moving forward, let's select the face, and then we're going to click on Thickness. We're also going to hit Select again, and we're going to click this face, that face, and I want a 3 millimeter thickness, and there we go. Now I'm going to hit Cancel just to show you. We could click right here in the toolbox, in the ribbon, you can click thickness, and then it will say which faces do you want. Same thing. Hit three, click right here, shows a preview. Now, don't forget to hit OK. There we go, look at that. We have our part. So now all we have to do is change the color of these pieces. So, the very last, you don't want to set the color on the body. You want to set the color. I could be wrong on this, but as I remember, it's on the last operation you did. But you could probably right-click and do... Actually, it doesn't show it. Okay, so never mind. Right-click thickness. <laughs> and go to set colors. And we're going to click and hold control. And we're going to grab all of these. And we're going to hit this one. I doubt it remembers. Oh, it remembers my selection from last time. This is the color of blue that I like. You can write that down. Uh, pound sign 0581, lowercase echo, lowercase delta. Hit OK. Hit OK. And there you go. We have a finished part, some sort of shelled part. I don't know what it is. Kind of cool. You could 3D print it. 
I don't know, do something with it. Um, okay, what else was I going to show you? Oh, okay. Now, if you've noticed last time, if you right click on this and do uh, Control Z, that uh, I don't know what I did. Oh, I accidentally hit random color and it changed everything. So I'm not going to go back through and change it. But if you were to right click and go to appearance, you could change the material to, I don't know, what, 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 I don't know what's cool, pewter, sure, hit close, you know, okay, cool, let's change it again, let's go to appearance, let's go to something a little bit more noticeable, how about bronze, hit close, so that's bronze, but then how do you get like, information on what the part is like how much does it weigh how much is this one thing you can do but it's kind of obscure is if you go to part workbench and then go to part uh, actually I, is it part i forgot to remember and it may not even be under part Primitives create shape builder, create a copy. Oh, check geometry. Whoops. Body. I want to say check geometry and then hit run check. Well, I like. Wasn't check geometry. At least we know it's, it's good. Um, what is it under? It's really hard to find. I need to check geometry results. Okay, settings. Run check. Okay, no. Well, there was something where you could get like material properties. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to pause the Okay, well, apparently it was in check geometry. Click this shape content. And you can see the area, the volume, mass and volume are the same. So depending on what material you're using, you have to go look on a periodic table to find the density. Not periodic table, sorry. Um, Google the density of bronze, and then you can, since you know it's mass and volume, even though they're the same, you're going to use either one of these or the other, and then solve for the other one. So if you pick, we know density is mass per um, unit volume, so kilograms per meter cubed. You use this as your mass, find the density, and then figure out, I don't know. You could do the math. I know how to do it. I've done it a few times. But apparently there's another way of doing it. And if we go to... Um, where is it? I think it's wind measured part. No. Come on. Help. Should be one called the add on manager. I haven't used it yet on this one. Oh, it's the add on manager. I can't get to it yet. So we need to go back to part design. Get rid of. Bring this out and hit close. And then slide that back in. A little bit of a UI issue there. Tools, add on manager, hit sure. Okay. And then in filters, you're going to look for one called FC info. Give it a second to load. Okay, FC info. Hopefully it finds it. And it's going to be a macro. Okay, I'm back. So up here, I didn't see this little thing from workbenches to macros. You're going to type in FC info and click on this one. Then it's just going to load up the information. It's going to tell you what it is. And then you should be able to hit install. Um, sure, hit add it to the toolbar and then hit close. 
what's this one? So then macros, let's see if it's actually, yeah. And if we hit execute, it's, it's in the property name right here in the bottom. It's going to tell you a bunch of things about what it is, the units, length of object, parameters, but I don't have an object selected at the moment. So if I click on this one, parameter of edges, tells you the area, volume, the unit mass based on um, material, which is liquid water. Let's change that to copper. So now 320 grams. So some basic info is kind of cool. Don't know. And then you just click it again to turn it off. But yeah, so that's how you would you would make this part and then find out information on it that is um, relatively nice to have. The FC info is a lot like SolidWorks's material evaluation box. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find it, uh, this program. It's free. It's open source. It's free, easy to get around and easy to use. So join the FreeCAD forums and say, hey, I'm using FreeCAD, need some help, this is how I do it. And uh, yeah, just let them know you're using FreeCAD and bada bing, bada boom, there you go. So thank you for watching.